Hello precious YouTube family, hope you all are being blessed. This is part 3 on the teachings of the early church in purgatory. And this is the last part, so Jesus has a message for us. Lord, do you have something to share? Jesus began. Beloved ones, it is true. <clears throat> Sorry. There will come a time when you must confront who and what you are and what you have done that was not righteous before me. For those who have never repented, it is a most terrible time of confrontation. For those who have prayed for mercy and given mercy to others, you will in some ways be shielded from the very worst, but you will know yourself as I know you. You will see yourself as I see you. This is why the river of life and the trees bearing fruit and leaves in heaven have been created, so that you might be healed as you eat them. There are really no words that I can prepare you with to face that moment. Nonetheless, I will try. Imagine a soul who has sealed a room in their souls, where all their sins are hidden, sins they never repented of. Now imagine them standing before me, the angels and the saints, and the four walls to this room are suddenly removed. In that moment, you will feel more naked than if your clothes were gone. In that moment, the searing realization of your sins that you thought no one would ever find out about, your sins which had a heavy impact on the lives of others, your sins that you have never repented of, they will be on display for all to see. This is a moment of accounting, not just to me, but to those citizens of heaven that have been injured by your sins. Dear ones, when you all of a sudden remember a sin from your childhood or earlier years, quickly come to me and repent of it. Ask for forgiveness, and if you can, in some way, repair the damage you did. Make a resolution to repair it and then follow through. This terrifying moment does not have to happen. The sins you repent of, I will forgive. Never more to be mentioned again. Even as I have written, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. I will cast them into the abyss of my mercy, for they are no more. In this moment, and here I think he's going back to the time when the four walls are removed. He continues, In this moment, heat will rise up from within you until you feel like you are standing in an overwhelming fire. You are saved, but unrepentant of all your sins, and now they must be brought up to deal with. The pain is like no other. You are uncovered, the deepest secrets exposed. There is nowhere to hide. You are standing before God and those you've injured. There is no one to turn to, to accuse of causing you to sin. All sins were of your own volition or of your own free will. And I think that what he means that even though the devil tempts us to sin, he has no power in any way to force us to sin. So we can't blame our sins on the devil or our friends or our weaknesses or anything, because everything was of our own free will. Jesus continued, In those moments, you are overcome by shame, grief, and remorse. Who you appear to be and who you really are is exposed for the world to see. I want to, uh, I want to spare you of this, my people, but you must come to me and repent and do your best to make amends for those you've hurt. All the words you've ever spoken behind someone's back, the gossip, the lies, the slander, all of it comes crashing in on your head. There is nowhere to run and hide, for you are standing before Almighty God in the great cloud of witnesses. The searing fire of that moment cannot be described, but, to, but suffice it to say, it is the most shaming moment you have ever experienced in your life. Before you stand your mother, 
brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, best friends, employers, all the pets you've had, all your sexual partners. There you are, with the fire of deserved accusation spreading throughout every limb until you can no longer stand under the weight and burden of it, and you collapse. This is what happens to those who do not repent of their sins, but keep hiding them, thinking no one will ever know. And there are yet other souls who have repented, but never learned to be kind. These must pass through the fires of their deeds, so they may experience how they affected their families and subsequent generations. Child molestation that shatters a soul's self-worth, abusive parents and husbands, criminal, Satanism, torture, suffocation, drowning, so many brutal acts to pass through until love, kindness, and forgiveness are learned. For some, it is torture. For others, it is the recognition of how they torture the helpless, how they deprived the hungry, and every form of selfishness will be seen for what it truly is. Oh, how I long to have mercy on you, dear ones. How terrible are these purgatorial fires for those of you who refuse to change while alive on earth. Purgatory or purification is a place where you learn to love even as I have loved you. You learn what your responsibilities were and how you failed them. You learn how to heal if you spent a lifetime hurting others. You are given opportunity after opportunity to take into your being the role of comforting and loving one another. Here you are perfected and made ready for heaven. My people, do not be afraid of this time, but look forward to it as an opportunity to take care of unfinished business, a chance to love like you have never learned to love, a chance to learn the meaning of serving and being humble. So much of purgatory could be avoided if you reformed your lives now. If you gave to the poor, not walking past them in scorn and contempt. If you listened patiently to a confused and hurting soul. If you counseled a child to forgive their parents' abuse. So many things you can contribute to, so you will see a hasty end to your time here. Do not delay your repentance for one day, for you do not know the hour I will come for you individually. Share what you have with the poor. Be kind to everyone. Do not give offense. Do not speak ill of others, especially to your own children. Rather, support and encourage them. Look after the elderly. Visit the sick. And in all your ways, walk as I walk in kindness, forgiveness, and unconditional love. Then, in that moment that you enter in, into eternity, you will hear my voice saying, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Now you may enter into your master's joy.